don't think he wanted to do push-ups. <laughs> As the Bruins rolled into Edmonton, we had ourselves a matchup of two of the most exciting teams in the league, and it had everything you want in a hockey game. Big saves, some bad blood, 11 goals with a late three-goal comeback and a thrilling finish. But to top it off, with DeBrusque playing in his hometown, Dad Louie was between the benches, which was cool enough. You're calling your son's game. But after Louie cashed in on an old coupon, doesn't have an expiry date, so I'm cashing it in tonight, kiddo. We got a father-son moment and a game that these two will never forget. So, with plenty to cover, let's get right to it. Right out of the gate, Ryan McLeod would get called for tripping as he chops down Grizzlick, who went down and was actually hurt on the play. I'll be honest, it didn't look too bad at first, but he went into the boards awkwardly and actually wound up leaving the game with an upper body injury. You hate to see that, as I hope he's alright, but it put the Bruins on the power play and determined it's geek from downtown and he scores with his 10th of the year goes through traffic to open the scoring as the Bruins cash in and speaking of cashing in we got this awesome moment between the benches of Louis DeBrusque getting to interview his son Jake DeBrusque when you were young you and Jordan made us really nice gifts and one of them you made I love how Jake immediately knew what was up as he reached for the coupon. His dad cashing in on a golden ticket from when Jake was a youngster. So an assist, a goal, or it's 30 push-ups. I don't know if I can do that right now, but I'll keep that in mind. I love you, kiddo. Have a good one, right? Now, DeBrusque hadn't scored in nine games, but keep this moment in mind. For now, though, the Oilers would push hard, but Swayman, making some big stops early, kept his team up a goal. Until, with eight to go, it's a turnover, Fogel drives the net, and he scores. This one starts with McDavid, Pocek forces a turnover, and Fogel, with the power move, beats Swayman to square it up at one apiece. And shortly after, we had another collision at the Boston Blue Line. McAvoy and Hyman came together, and honestly, this is probably an interference call in my opinion. And while McAvoy boy went down initially what was good to see is that he appeared to be all right but yeah some chippiness in the first some good saves on both ends right to the very end as it was an action-packed first but as it came to an end we were just getting started because over in the second it took not 30 seconds marsh on in and he scores making it two to one he beats skinner short side one he's gonna want back as the bruins take back the lead early just four minutes later bokvist on net and they score again it's all bees in the second redirected by frederick all kinds of traffic in front to make it a 3-1 hockey game and so trying to give the oilers some of their life back perry first takes a run at mcavoy and then the warm essentially forces his way into a scrap with Watherspoon. i obviously can't show too much of it here but it was a good tilt and while the oilers did have some chances they just could not get one to go and so that gets us to this with six to go it's Pasternak on net, rebound, and they score. But look who it is. Jake DeBrusque in front with his 13th of the year, gives his dad the goal, and guess who's not doing 30 push-ups? I don't think he wanted to do push-ups. <laughs> Again, just such a cool moment. Moms in the stands, just beautiful stuff all around. But we now had a 4-1 to hockey game. It was running away from the Oilers, and needing an answer, they got it. It's Hyman down for Fogel, and with his second of the night, a big answer. He wraps it around Swayman to cut the lead to just two, and the comeback was on. For now, though, the first 40 came to an end as we head over to the third, where six minutes in, Swayman tries to clear it. It's kept in. CC unloads it, and they score. This one leaking through Swayman as Janmark there puts it in. It's just his third of the year, but it's a big one to bring the oil back to within just one now. And just a minute later, Nurse on net, catching the rebound. It's Corey Perry. Of course it is. With their third in a row, his seventh knots it up at four apiece as the Oilers coming all the way back, tie it up, and we had a hockey game. Pasta had seen enough, though. It's Lowry back for Pasta. He walks down and 
boom. Finally, answering back, he beats Skinner blocker side for his 36th of the year. But it was back and forth. Ekholm with the bomb and Zach Hyman with the rebound. Ties it up for the third time in the game as the Oilers make it five apiece. And the Oilers seem to be getting the better chances late. I didn't get footage of it, but Van Riemsdyk would take a late period call for tripping, which meant even as the third expired, the Oilers got nearly a full power play to start overtime. And as we got into it, they couldn't get it to go early, but then McDavid to dry sidle and a huge start stopped by Swayman, he comes across and says no. He made another one shortly after in similar fashion as the Bruins, able to kill it, get Van Riemsdyk out of the box, he's alone, and he's stopped by Skinner. What a game, as Skinner had to make a few nice stops in overtime with the Bruins pushing. And as they did, McAvoy, he drags it, falling down, and he scores. Boston takes it, 6-5 as McAvoy, bringing it around the fallen cane, avoids the poke from Skinner, and on the backhand is able to beat him in what was a thrilling game as the Bruins take it in Alberta. Yeah, just a heck of a hockey game with DeBrusque, by the way, getting an assist on that final goal too, as again, not one the DeBrusque family is soon to forget. But yeah, that's about it for this one. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one.